Kobe White appears set to make his return from his injury against the Houston Rockets, a game in which the Chicago Bulls could finally get to the illustrious 500. I don't know why we're so excited about that. And we'll be discussing uh, NBA prospects in this year's tournament that the Chicago Bulls should be looking out for. All that and more on today's Locked On Bulls. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. That's Pat, the designer, host, and creator of the Windy City Breeze and host of the Chicago Bears podcast over at ESPN 1000. I'm Hayes, host, creator of Chicago Bulls and Chicago Bears Central YouTube pages and podcasts. And Pat, Kobe White, full participant in practice today, barring any setbacks, he will return against the Houston Rockets. His first game back after missing three games, potentially, if he's able to make his return. The Bulls have won two of those games. Pat, how do you feel right now about Kobe White returning for the team? I mean, listen, you you need it. I would say maybe don't rush himself back in. Um, Don't sit there and try and, you know, go out there and and, uh, be the focal point of everything that's going on. Ease your way back in because guess what? The guys have done a pretty good job uh, while you've been able to sit out to be able to just kind of, you know, steady the ship. Io DeSumo has really stepped up in that time. DeMar DeRozan, we know what he's able to do. I think Vooch has really gotten himself going as well in this time since Kobe's been out. So um, just kind of try and ease your way back in. Don't try to do too much. And I, I think that this is a, a good game to come back uh, against. You got this game and then you got Boston, who, listen, Boston is just eviscerating muzz on it. It did almost blow a lead to the Bucks today. That would that would have been an yeah. interesting one with no Giannis on the team. So maybe you're starting to see a couple of chinks in the armor. But um Boston is <laughs> nine straight games at home. That, that Boston game's in Boston, ain't it? Uh I think that Boston game is in Boston. So no, we're at home. We're at are we at home on that? Okay, yeah. we might be able to get that one because Boston is literally killing people at the crib. Uh but this is a good game to kind of set yourself up for that game. And I think uh you know, listen, I will say this. You've got an invigorated Jalen Green with the fact that, uh, you know, he's uh, he's popping off. Uh, <laughs> what short name he ended up popping off? Gave her the, uh, got, got oh, the old baby uh, on the way. Uh, uh, Drea, Drea. Drea, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, he's got, he's got, listen, they, nothing makes you lock in like knowing that you got a shorty on the way at your job. Yeah, you know I mean, like nothing, nothing's going to make you work harder. So you got to deal with that on the other side. It may be a tough fight that day. So just prepare yourself, but no Alfred and Shingoon. So that'll be nice. I mean, we're supposed to be previewing the game in the next topic. You you went all you went rogue. I mean, listen, I I just said it's it's about he's Kobe coming back. It's about wh- how he's gonna come back. We could preview the game specifically, but listen, <laughs> Dre is having Jalen Green's baby, and that's dangerous, brother. I mean, listen, <laughs> he's that's on, him, on bro. another level. That's on him. That's on him slipping. Don't right, get right. lost in the sauce, y'all. Right, um, right. everybody judge him. You'd have done it. I'm not talking to you. I'm just talking. Well, you probably would have done it too. But I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the audience right there. You'd have done it. JDH, come on, dog. Oh, uh, JDH, JDH was in it face for you know what? Let's keep it mush. Um, but <laughs> I'm glad to have Kobe back. I mean, Kobe, the fact that Kobe, this is Kobe's first stretch of games missed all season. Um I, you know, Kobe's going to come back locked in. Like you said, though, don't come back try to do too much. You've seen how Io stepped up. You've seen how DeMar's played since you've been gone. Ease yourself back in, right? And I think that's going to be the important part of it is for him to pace himself. But knowing Kobe, Kobe's going to try to go uh, 100 miles an hour the moment he gets back. So, yeah, we'll see what he ends up doing. I think that right now, though, the best thing for him to do is just kind of not even to say, like, don't don't play full speed, but almost just like, you know, let the game come to you naturally. Don't sit there and try to force things. Um, If anything, focus on getting your shot back because that's the thing that the Bulls are going to need most as we head down this stretch. He's Kobe. Kobe's three point shot is, is really what the Bulls are missing these last couple of games, especially in those moments where you almost lose to the Portland Trailblazers because they go five for 12 in the three point line in the fourth quarter. Like I think that that is one aspect of his game that you'd really like to see uh, Kobe get back uh get back quicker sooner than later um and that's the that's the biggest part that I think heading into you know this last stretch of games that the Bulls have coming up that you need to really focus on getting going in this game and Houston's going to allow that cuz 
not a lot of defense going to be played tonight. That day. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. Maybe there's surprises now with this injury update to Kobe. It also comes with that an injury update to uh, one Patrick Williams who actually had his surgery uh, today and uh, everything was go. Uh, no no issues, no complications in the surgery. And it says that he can rejoin the team in April as far as back traveling with the team, things like that. Of course, he's not going to get back on the basketball court. But uh, here in Patrick Williams has had a surgery, went successful. Um, the fact that he can even come back as early as April is, is I guess, Promising he should be cleared by training camp. How do you feel about that, Pat? Uh, listen, it, it'll be good to get him back in the building. Yeah, I mean, it'll. Be, you still hope for the best for P. Will's career. You hope that you can make something out of it. We know what AK is going to do. He's, he's probably going to sit here and try and re-up P. Will on some kind of cheap deal. Listen, uh, are we are we saying that P. Will can, is, is not uh, heading toward a Kobe deal? That's really the question. So... It, Coming off of an injury, kind of playing at that mid-level, you might be talking about re-signing P. Will for a lot cheaper than we thought. Um, and that'll be a good thing because you'll be able to continue development, hopefully. And the Bulls have actually done a good job with that. So hearing that P. Will will be back um, with no setbacks coming back next season, um, I, I'm excited for that. I hope that, listen, I, I know I am the person on this show that kind of is like, P, I, I was the first person to claim he was a bust. I feel like he's not to say he's done, but he's not going to be what anybody hoped he would be as the fourth overall pick. But I never would have assumed we were going to see this Kobe White this season. And Kobe White proved us wrong. The Bulls are doing something with player development. I hope that he's able to get back as quickly as possible so that he can be prepared for next season. Yeah, I mean, that that's that's the key thing there, right, is that getting him back uh, so, you, so he can continue his development, working with Peter Pat. And I really hope, like, this is one of the first years where I'll, I, no no judgment if they don't, right? But I hope that most of these young players stay in Chicago this year so they can work with Peter Patton, so they can work with that player development staff, so they can, you know, focus and lock in on those type of things that they need to get done. Because, like, Io, you see the, the leap Io has made, and Billy Donovan talked about a big part of that being is the fact that Io didn't leave because he is from Chicago, that he was yeah. in Chicago the whole offseason in their gym two, three times a day working with Peter Patton, stuff like that. So uh, because it seems like that player development staff is working, right, for, for what we need them to do, I hope a lot of the players do consider staying in Chicago. I know they're going to go work with their own trainers uh, and their coaches. Like Stop they do every going season. west with DeMar. That's all we ask. I mean, listen, Stop. and and that, and that's not a knock on DeMar because what he brings as far as leadership, mentorship is all important, right? I'm not trying to knock DeMar for anything, but DeMar, he's great for the mentality part of the growth of the game yeah. for these young players, but in working in the refinement of their actual basketball skills, no, nah, go ahead and stay in Chicago, man. And I th I'll say this, right? It it's interesting because I think now as you've seen the growth of some of these young players, I think that there's a two-part kind of in this that you that you needed to see. I would assume we may not have known how to work before going out west with DeMar. Kobe White may have not known how to work before going out west with DeMar. Uh, Patrick Williams may have not known how to work before going out west with DeMar. And so now you know how to work. Now you can work in your way. Now you can work to refine mm. your game. Now you can work in a way. Because you can't knock how De DeMar's work ethic. You can't knock how DeMar goes about his day. Starts his day at what, 5 a.m.? Finishes his day at like, you yeah. know, 3 or 4? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's 10 hours of work in the offseason just on your body, just on... Uh, 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 refining your game. I do think that there's a, a need for that, but okay, now you figured out how to work. Now, how do you work with Peter Patton and the development staff that you have here? Not only to refine your game, but to refine your role that this team is going to have set in place. The advantage you have with Peter Patton is he's going to know, okay, Billy, how do you want to use this guy? How do you want this guy to fit into your system? How do you want well, this guy no, to well, work? No, you, 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 you're, you're getting a little too fancy. You think Billy knows how he wants to use? No, I'm just, I'm just listen, playing. listen. I think he knows how he wants to use him, but nobody knows how Billy knows how he wants to use him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nobody knows what I'm saying. Nobody knows what Billy's saying. Like all I'm saying is though, no, I, I think that you know there, there's kind of a how would you like to see this guy be utilized and the Bulls can actually implement that versus just going out there and trying to improve your own game and being here, you can go. Uh, okay, so what do you want me to do? P. Will, we need you to be a, a legitimate three-point threat next year. Like, we need you taking them, not not just taking a, the few that you want to take and making them. We need you putting them up. I bet. I'm practicing 500 threes a day in the gym. Like, I think that's kind of how you work that game plan out.
Well, let's hope that that's the case. But uh, Kobe on his way back. Patrick Williams has a successful surgery. And, uh, yeah, those are two things that are both boding well for the Bulls' present and future. But talking about the Bulls' future, man, next up we're going to be discussing can the Bulls get to 500 when they take on the Houston Rockets, which is something that's eluded the Bulls for the better part of two years at this point but before we talk about that we're going to talk to you guys about one of our sponsors and that is ebay motors passion drive and patience what brings home the winning trophies also what keeps your ride or die alive ebay motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle at the level it, it up to peak and level it up to peak performance from superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and more whether you're into speed power or style ebay motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items, exclusions, do apply. All right, Pat. The Bulls versus the Houston Rockets, man. This is the one. And look, I, I really struggle to keep talking about the Bulls getting to 500 because it'll be <laughs> so Bulls to get to 500 tonight against the Houston Rockets and then and lose the, the rest of the games game. all season. Yeah, man, listen. I, I know there's in the, like, and that's why I keep saying it. And some people have started calling me pessimistic because every time this 500 topic comes up, I say, all right, getting to 500 is cool. Can you stay at 500, though, is the biggest question there. That's the bigger question. I get it. You got to get to 500 first. But, um, I mean, I guess the Bulls started off the season at 500, zero and zero. So we were at 500 <laughs> then, if nothing else. <laughs> and we lost to Detroit. Yeah, we lost to Detroit. <laughs> we found a way to lose to Detroit. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, listen, I, I'll ask you this, right? Like, we're talking about the Bulls getting to 500. You've got this Houston game. But realistically, like you said, it's about what are you going to do past 500? Does getting to 500 do anything for you going into Boston a little bit more healthy? Not fully healthy, right? Pete will still out all, all the pieces that we're missing, but a little bit more healthy, uh, maybe a little bit more confident, maybe feeling like you've overcome one beast. And... Listen, a win versus Boston maybe is the thing that that ignites some random flame that gets this Bulls team going in the right direction. I mean, I, it, where do things have happened, right? Like, I mean, Miami went Bulls, to the finals last year as an eighth seed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, technically, they went as a tenth seed because they made it through the play in. But weren't they eight? I could have sworn they finished that tenth. No, they were, we, below they us, were right? definitely not behind us. Oh no, no, no! You're right. There's they no way that, they were they behind lost us. that first playing. They lost that first playing game, and then they beat us. That's what it was. Yes. Okay, I was yeah, like, yeah, but yeah. how they face us? Um, I mean, listen, anything's possible. This is the NBA. This is sports. One thing that you know, there's always everybody loves a good Cinderella story. But here's what I'll say when it comes down to all of that: I don't care. Prove it. That's what I say. Prove it. And even if you are to make it out the playing, if you get above 500, make it out the playing tournament. Cool. What's next? Right. So uh, I, that's just the point that I've reached with the season. It's not that I'm down on the team per se. It's not that I'm over it. Or I'm just ready for the season to end. It's just like all these all these things that we're grasping at right now to feel to feel like wins really don't mean crap because at the end of the day, we're still this team that the roster doesn't balance out and we need some shooting and we need some rim protection. And until we get those things and trust our young players, we're just going to keep being the team that we've been being. For so and long. I mean, that, that's, that's why, right? Like I've said that this stretch of games is the most important. If you get to 500 here, you get a game above 500 versus Boston. You got kind of some up and down games competitively to finish out the season, but maybe you're able to finish a couple games above 500, right? That that's better if you finish a couple of games above 500, that's a better scenario when you start off four and 15 than finishing below oh, 500. Yeah, you know I mean, and I'm not listening. able to finish with 43 wins after a four and 15 start. Yeah, that's 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 listen, that's what the front office they really need to. And that's the thing I think what I'm ultimately I like a lot of the guys on this team. We have talent on this team, but I think we've seen the same shortcomings of this team. Yeah. For how, how many years of me four coming years. to the season and saying, hey, if we get an injury to one of our centers, we're done. For the last four years, we've been talking about that. Now, realistically, both our centers have been the healthiest people in the NBA. <laughs> 
for pretty much for the last two years. Yeah, thank thankfully, right? Yeah. But then we then we lose P. Will or we, or we yeah. lose Javante Green, right? And then we got to start. Pa- uh, and Javante Green Russo. was a center by all intents and purposes. It was a power forward for this team. But yeah, it's just so. I um, I mean, I ultimately until this front office wakes up and stops sitting on their hands. And I just worry that a four, uh, uh, a 43 win finish to the season is not just going to look at it. AK is going to come out, try this happy ass out there. And, and, and the, the, the I season, just, I just started. feel like, you know, did, we, we did not tell y'all we were competitive. Did, like, do you know the gall it takes at the end of a season to tell a, a, your fan base, you guys are going to be surprised by what we do in the off season. And in that offseason, you get Javon Carter and Torrey Craig, and you say, that's it, we're done. Hey, surprise. That's what they did. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> that's what they did. You guys I, I, are going to be – Let me frame it like this, then. Let me say this. Because this is how I kind of framed the Bulls being – when I did the – are the Bulls a legit playoff team? A win against Boston gives you something to game plan with because you've gotten destroyed by Boston two times. So you need to figure something out if you're able to get into the playoffs, because you're probably going to be playing Boston as the eighth seed. If the Bulls get into the playoffs led by Kobe White with an above 500 record, does that send us into the offseason feeling better about this team? Because now you've got Kobe and Io leading the way versus DeMar and Vooch and, and all those guys, right? Like getting above 500 when somebody like halfway through the season goes, well, it's your team now is wild. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like it was really like it's Zach's team and they're terrible. And then all of a sudden it was just like, hey, Kobe, your turn. <laughs> and then the Bulls go on a nice little run in December and they've been kind of 500 since then. But like, I don't know if I feel great about it. I don't know if I feel like we're championship bound. Like, I'm not going to say that. But I do feel like you leave and you head into the offseason maybe with a little bit more confidence that they were able to pull this off being the young guys on the team listen again i feel confident in the team that's not that like the players aren't my problem i don't feel confident in the team i don't know i feel confident in the players bro i feel confident these players are going to work hard i feel confident in these players having talent i don't feel confident right now in the front office to capitalize on that rather than it just it's going to let make them Rest on their laurels. That's my biggest issue with this. I hear everything you're saying. I would love to feel like, yeah, we rolled into the playoffs. Kobe and Iowa were the biggest part of it. All, 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 all that's great. And then we're going to go into the season, yet another season, with DeMar DeRozan averaging 18 shots per game. Like, I just, where I'm at right now, is all, we'll those, all those things, yeah, that too. All, the, all those things sound great. And I yep. hope that they happen. I pray to, to the heavens that they happen. But what's next? That's the that that's where I start losing is okay. What's next? Because most franchises, if you the have draft. young players step up and they lead you, they say, "All right, let's build around these young players." I'm worried that AK is going to look at it and say, "Bet we don't have to do nothing. We're just going to keep riding it out." Well, I think here's the here's the interesting thing, right? You, you have to go to the draft. You have no choice. <laughs> and this time they actually have a draft pick. Now, are they going to get it right, the, bro? That's the thing. They always have a choice because that that I can see them being like, you know what. We're gonna trade that draft pick. We're gonna trade the pick. <laughs> We're gonna trade that pick. <laughs> what are we doing? We're trading the pick for who? <laughs> We're trading the pick. Trading who are you the trading pick to? It don't Tory matter. Craig's brother. <laughs> like, I don't know. Dog. I don't even that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, it's just and I hate to feel that There's way about this team. confidence in the front Cause the, office, Yeah, because right? this that like uh, capitalize off of you. your young players, and not even just Kobe and Io have made the leap, right? But Ernalop showed you something. Uh, Julian Phillips has showed you, hey, if nothing else, this dude has that dog in him, and he's not afraid to take shots when you need him to take shots. And that's all great. But I just worry that this front office, if we're winning, they're going to look at that and say, bet, we need a veteran off this bench. What about Julian Phillips developing? We'll get him about eight to ten minutes. We're going to go out and get Kelly Oubre Jr. to be our scorer off the bench. Yeah, uh, Victor Oladipo, uh, first overall. Bro, I swear to God, like, <laughs> come on, bro, come on, hey, like, no. come on. Hey, you know we love a good. Uh, we love the NBA for some reason loves a good Oladipo just making it on the team. I think they bro, just like everybody. His everybody name. keep Oladipo showed those flashes, and now every t- listen, not every team, but it's a team every year that just looks at it and says, "We hope he's going to get back to be to being able to be there." Now you know what? what it is, and it's it's sad, but it's probably good for his career because he gets to keep making money. Victor Oladipo. Has has become the player version of uh, cash compensation. 
Like he's included in every trade at some point during the season because of the contract that they end up signing him. <laughs> I hate it because you're absolutely right. Hey, dog, here's the thing. It's not bad for him because he's like, because I ain't got no right. knees. What you want from me? I ain't got no knees. And, uh, but I'm making $19 million. Why are you making $19 million? It was a one year deal. They needed to make a mid season trade. Hi, I'm Mr. Mid season trade. <laughs> I hate that you're oh, absolutely poor right big on man. That. Hey, listen, I, I'll say this. The, the one thing that I think maybe changes the outlook of this team is the, is the topic that we got coming up next, man. The, there's some draft prospects that the, the Chicago Bulls actually could go out and look at that I think are very interesting. Heading into this tournament, March Madness getting cracking, baby. Let's get it going. You got a bracket, dog? You got a bracket? No, you, I don't. You a bracket, bracket guy? You're not a bracket guy? I, you, I usually am a bracket guy, but guess what? The Chicago Bears have had me work in this offseason. I've, 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 on Chicago Bears Central, we have released 38 videos in the last like 12 days. I'm yeah. done. Uh, mentally, I'm, I, I don't know what to talk about anymore. Hey, man, throw a bracket in there. Just, just get a bracket. <laughs> it's a, it's a Bears bracket. We got to, we got to come up with a Bears, a Bears bracket, bracket for like, yeah, for like pain. The, no, no, no. Oh, a Bears bracket for quarterbacks. <laughs> That's we got enough quarterbacks to do it. We got 64 that's, quarterbacks over the last 20 years. That's not a bad idea. I'm texting Joel. That's not right, man, let's keep this thing moving along. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Leave that five-star review. Y'all know what to do. We got to tell you guys first, before we get into this final topic, about some of those draft prospects playing in March Madness, about Nissan. Our sponsors over at Nissan want to know, are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Hey, yo. Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capability to take your adventure to the next level. Listen, the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder has room up to eight and as uh, and as an expensive cargo capacity and advanced ability, 4x4 four four capability with 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds towing when Adventure Calls the Pathfinder is there for the answer. You can also look at the Nissan Armada, and it will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 four four that can set up uh, to sit up to eight in first class luxury style, tow bigger and explore further with the 2024 Nissan Armada. You can take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, Pat. Hey, dog, I couldn't get no lower third on that. Dog. I couldn't, oh, I couldn't my get, bad, bro. Easy. I mean, the hate is crazy. Now I got to get the text message. <laughs> he always blames me anyway so it is what it is you gotta worry about it you're darker than me wow wow <laughs> okay that's not something I hear a whole hell of a lot we don't of. play that's the jazz crazy. tomorrow do we we don't that's we don't crazy play the tomorrow do we that's always <laughs> Hey, th- it was, was great. <laughs> Y'all know David Locke listens to every episode right before a team plays his team. David Locke is the owner of Locked On. He's the owner. That was of the, the Leroy episode, right? That was the, so the Leroy episode is the episode where we found out that his name is Le- Leroy. Is, is Leroy. Hey, it? Leroy. <laughs> Our boss listened to that. Luckily, we're hilarious, so he found it funny. But. It's just always like I was like, hey, yo, I never thought about that. <laughs> like, hey, that could have gone very left very quick. We're gonna start what if I had just thrown out a uh, Zion Williamson and, and porn star? Yeah, I mean, like that would have been crazy. That would have been wild. Oh, uh, though, Pat, uh, NCAA tournament time, man. So this is the type of this is the time of year where most casual college basketball fans watch and they'll take whatever happens in this tournament and say, Hey, this guy's the best player in this draft because of how he played in this tournament. But we are going to look at some of the best prospects for the bulls in this NCAA tournament. Who do you want to start off with Pat? I mean, listen, y'all know the guy that I I want the bulls to go get is Taryn Shannon jr. But I've, I feel like I've talked about him way too much. Y'all going to hear a lot about him uh, because I think the Illini will end up making it at least to the sweet 16 and probably competing a little bit past there. So, uh, I mean, dog, we got we got freaking. I, I don't even know who we play the first game. Like sixteen, whoever, whoever's the, some bottom feeder school, and then we play uh, 
we play freaking probably BYU in the next round. I think we can beat both of them. But yeah, I mean, you never know. But um, I, th- there's one guy that I have looked at a little bit and is Dalton Netch. Mm. He's kind of a, he's a little bit interesting, right? He's kind of a guard wing type of player, but he's a little bit older, 23 years old. He's a 6'6 wing. He's out of Tennessee. He um, also looks like John Claw Van Dam and uh, a, a little bit. Dog. A little, you you beat me yeah, to the jokes yeah, on the yeah. face, bro. Yeah, Universal yeah. Soldier, Universal Soldier. Yeah, but I mean, when you look at this guy, he is somebody who is 18th. Uh, uh, he's 18th in scoring in the SEC right now. He's shooting at 48% from the field, 42% from three. The three point shooting, something that you know we desperately need. And I think that he's somebody that could fit in here, six six, maybe still a little bit undersized at that wing. I don't know if you want to go height wise at that wing, but when you talk about somebody who's just kind of shown themselves as a pure score type of player in college, and I don't know if that translates over to the NBA, right? But like as a scorer, I think he's somebody outside of TSJ. If you don't go get TSJ that you end up liking a lot because of the ability to put the ball on the floor, the ability to score at, at all levels and the ability to shoot. Like, I think he's a, uh, he's an interesting name to kind of bring into the, to the fold outside of Terrence Shannon. And I'd love to see the bulls uh, um, go out and add a player like that. And he's somebody that I'll be watching a little bit closer in the term. The problem is, is that I think in most mocks he's selected, he's slated to go in the top five, but weirder things have happened. This draft is so, this draft the, is so off, though. All bro, the talent like, is so. It's well, I mean, it's not really awful. It's it's a bad draft for superstar level no, no, talent. Off, There's some really off, off, no, off, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because players can literally, depending on where the, where the team's draft selection goes, it can drastically change where some of these players are going depending on needs. But one guy that I've been focused on and I've been talking about a, a lot here. <laughs> recently is Kyle uh, Filipowski from Duke, center from Duke, seven feet, legit seven footer, 250 pounds, uh, is averaging, I believe, right under two blocks per game right now in college basketball, Um, has some ability to stretch the floor a little. I'm not going to call him a a floor stretcher, but I will say that if you if you leave him out there open, he can he can knock down a three pointer. So this is a guy that I'm really heavily looking at in this draft. I love if he does fall to the Chicago Bulls, depending on whether they go best available or if they go need. If they're going need, he's definitely could be at the top of their boards. If they go best available, they're definitely going to be some players that I like them to take a look at before Filipowski. But considering that we have that hole in center, he's got he's a guy who's who's high on my on my board right now. Do you got Filipowski higher than Missy? Out of uh, out of Baylor, the the big out of Baylor, yes. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. See, to me, he's like a. I I think he. It's such a weird draft, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Like, there's there's a lot of names in this draft that I'm like, I can see how this guy fits here. Not the thing about Missy that instantly stood out to me was uh uh, uh Captain Carney guy, seven feet tall, oh, seven sure. foot five wingspan. Yeah, I mean, like Captain Carney guy, um, really good athlete, moves his feet really well. Um, when given given space, he can kind of do some things. And I think with a Kobe White, and here here's kind of why I've said this: not crazy numbers in college, right? He's ten and he, he's eleven and five. But if you're able to develop this guy coming into the NBA, he reminds me a lot of a Clint Capella type of player. And I do think that that is a valuable type of player when you talk about what Kobe White is becoming. When you talk about if Kobe White is your number one option, I think that style of player, a Clint Capello on this team with Kobe White running pick and roll, and it's just like, what's he do? He goes up. I wouldn't be mad at that if that's kind of what we transition to at the big man position. I would like one of the modern big. I'd love a Chet Holmgren. You know what I mean? Like, if there, if there's the, that guy's out there. But They're never going to be that lucky, bro. This is the Chicago Bulls. This is Chicago. Like, Chet proved me wrong. I I, I said hey, this. Hey, bro, he proved time. a lot of people wrong. Bro, he proved me wrong. I did not think Chet was going to be able to, uh, to, to body up as much as he has in the NBA. Man, he going chest to chest and, with and Murray's out here. That, while, he, while he's definitely added some muscle and, 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 and some size, he still, he still is is very skinny. He still has a lot of room for growth oh, too. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you got to give Ch- Chet's like another one who's like him. The fact that him and Wimby in the same season are both proven living up to all the hype around them. You got to give him credit for that. 
Yeah, no, I mean, listen, hit, dog. I said it. My dad asked me today. He was like, "What do you think about Wimby?" I said, "He's living up to all the hype, and Greg Popovich hates him." Did Did you freeze? Did I freeze? Who froze? Okay, it was Hayes. It was Hayes. He's still in here. I don't know if you can see yourself, but you're still in here. <laughs> Bro. Technology is a mother, bro. Hey, bro, they hate on you tonight. Nothing. I they are hating nothing. on you tonight, dog. Did you yeah. see yourself still in here, bro? I did absolutely. <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. The smile frozen was crazy, bro. Hey, when I started breaking down with me, I was like, uh, "Are you are you alive? Are you good? No, did you no. did you just freeze with a smile? Like, are you about to murder somebody? At least, at least other... it happened on a smile, right? Because it could have been worse than that. I think that's scarier for most people here. I'm because, not worried like, about scaring people. Listen, f those people. I wasn't <laughs> scaring myself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I was gonna say before we get out of here, this is is one of those drafts. And I'm not gonna lie to you, and I know get, don't get, don't get me wrong. I love that. I love Julian Phillips. I do think that if Julian continues to develop, he does have like right outside lottery level talent. Yeah. But this is one of those drafts where the, if the Bulls had a second round pick, because like the guy that you like, Missy, he's slated to go in second round most of those drafts. The Bulls could, if they had both their picks, could pick up a wing and a big in this draft. And it just, I don't know if they're going to trade into the second round considering they had to give up two seconds last year. But this is one of those drafts I really wish the Bulls had, had a second. I mean, right listen, do we have a spare $100 around here? Like, we I can mean, you can buy some seconds. You can buy some seconds. Not, buy some seconds. Um, I've seen Missy going I've seen Missy going a little bit higher than that, dog. I don't know. Then the, you, got a, you, you got him slated in the second round? I've seen him going like... High second round. High second round? I've seen him going late first. I mean, but I like, I, but I like but his game mixing with, yeah, I like his game mixing with Kobe White. I don't know who's who's uh, who's number one on the mock that you're looking at right now. The mock that I'm looking at, Cody Williams is number one. That checks out. Yeah, that checks out. I, I'm yeah. cool. Yeah, um, I, I, he's the clear cut number one. In this yeah, show. I, I don't think nobody. I was I was just like, who are we looking at out here? But, Even though uh, he looks a little light skinned, Tony Snellish. I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm just. <laughs> Now you talk about light skin Tony Snell as far as no, I'm talking about actual facial features. Features. Now that's first off, that's disrespectful. Uh, hey, disrespect is earned sometimes. Blame talk to his parents and genetics. No, and that hold on, it, it's a it's a specific. I'm not going Tony Snell here. He looked like the black dude that is the lead in every basketball movie about overcoming and being better than what the hood told you you could be. All right, bro, wrap it up. Come on, let's go. Okay. I'm just saying, dog, we gonna start. First off, still less disrespectful than calling him light-skinned Tony Snell, dog. You're talking about wrap it up. Light-skinned Tony Snell may be the most disrespectful thing you can call somebody, bro. <laughs> if the Tony shoe fits. Is top five ugly in the NBA all time. Yeah, him and Kerry Kittles and Sam Cassell. Yeah, but... I mean, bro, Sam Cassell yeah. got bad teeth. Hey, man, appreciate y'all for tuning in, showing love. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Lead a five-star review. Y'all know what to do, man. Follow us uh, on everything at Locked On Bulls. You can follow me on everything at Pat the Designer. And uh, don't never let nobody call you light-skinned Tony <laughs> Snell. You immediately have to throw hands. <laughs> you guys can follow me at CEO Hayes. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Bulls. We are free and available on every podcasting app and platform of your choice, as well as YouTube for Pat the Designer. This has been Locked On Bulls, and we out here. Peace, y'all. Peace. Light skinned Tony Snell. I run a face. I would, if you called me that, I would drive to your home just to run a face. I'm not going to lie to you. I'd be like, hey, I'd be there in six and a half hours. <laughs> and then you got to wait till I open the door. You got to be like, I challenge you to a duel. Hey, no, <laughs> I'm, coming, I'm jumping straight through the window like an anime. Oh, there's going to be a 140-pound Akita on you. Oh, dang, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'll be outside. <laughs>